Okay, so I'm just going to look at a couple of slightly trickier examples using the chain rule then. So the first thing I'm going to try and differentiate is this function, y equals x cubed plus 3 minus x uh, to the power of 4, then all square rooted. So let's see what happens when we try to uh, apply the chain rule here. So first I notice that the outside function is the square root, uh, which is, you know, I could also write as the power to the power of, half, of 1 half, so I could uh, do that. So if I differentiate the outside function first, I'm going to get 1 half times x cubed plus 3 minus x to the 4 all to the minus 1 half so uh, the derivative of x to the half is 1 half x to the minus 1 half and we've just got this in here and then using the chain rule we need to multiply by the derivative uh, of this uh, inside function here so we need to we need to know what uh, d by dx of x cubed plus 3 minus x to the 4 is and that's going to go in here um, now to differentiate this, well, x cubed becomes 3x squared, uh, but now I've got to use the chain rule again to differentiate this part here. So, uh, so we get uh, now, the, now within 3 minus x to the 4, the uh, x to the 4 is the outside function, so I'm going to get 4x uh, cubed, but it's not x, it's 3 minus x, and now I've got to multiply by the derivative of 3 minus x, so d by dx of 3 minus x, well that differentiates to 0 and that differentiates to minus 1, so it's just times minus 1. So this is uh, 3x squared uh, minus 4 times 3 minus x cubed. So that's what I need to put in here. That's the derivative of this whole thing we've worked out. So we've got 3x squared minus 4 times 3 minus x cubed. So uh, here I had to use the chain rule twice because um, when I applied the chain rule and looked at the inside function, um, I could still differentiate it. I could still differentiate it, but it needed the chain rule uh, applied again to be able to do that uh, differentiation. Here's another example. So if I want to find the derivative of uh, this function, I'm going to have dy by dx uh, using the chain rule. Well, the outermost function is sort of x to the five. I've got something to the power of five, so I differentiate that and get 5x uh, to the 4, uh, but the something isn't just x, it's x squared plus the square root of uh, 3x cubed minus 1. And now to complete this, I need to multiply by the derivative of this inside bit, so I need to work out d by dx of x squared plus the square root of 3x cubed uh, minus 1. So that's 2x, and now I need to differentiate this bit here, the square root, so that's d by dx of 3x cubed minus 1 to the power 1 half, because power 1 half is the square is the square root, so that 3 there is an index by the way. Um, now, uh, so again by the chain rule I can say well look at the outside function, square root of x or x to the 1 half, and say well that's uh, then differentiates to 1 half x to the minus 1 half, so that's 3x cubed minus 1, and now by the chain rule, I need to multiply by the derivative of this inside function. So I get 9x squared, and actually the minus 1 differentiates to 0, so actually just 9x squared. So this is 2x plus 1 half times 9x squared times 3x cubed minus 1 to the minus 1 half. And that then is all what I need to put in, in here, because that's what we're trying to differentiate to apply the chain rule to the original function. So 2x plus... Um, so a half times 9x squared, let's write that as 9 over 2x uh, squared times 3x cubed minus 1 uh, to the minus 1 half. And that's my final answer. It looks a bit ugly, but we have been able to differentiate it. And there's no limit to how many times we can apply the chain rule. It might be that actually when I got to this stage trying to differentiate this, okay, I, I realize I have to use the chain rule again. It could be, of course, that uh, I would need to use the chain rule again within that and and within that again, um, depending on the sort of function that we're looking at. But, but in principle what the chain rule says is we differentiate the outside function and then multiply it by the derivative of whatever the inside function is, and if we happen to need to use the chain rule again to do that inside function, well we do that, and then we differentiate its outside function and multiply the derivative of its, of its inside function, and if we need to use the chain rule again, we do that, and you know we keep going until we, until we get down to a function that we can differentiate.